for joining us on Town Talk. On today's Town Talk, I'm joined by Cape and Island State Senator Julian Sear. Julian, thank you so much for joining Always us. Always good to be with you. So last year we were here in October, so we're going to provide a little updates on what we talked about in October. There was a lot going on. Uh, Governor Healy had a lot of new initiatives and bond bills and tax relief and tax cuts. So let's do a quick update. Let's start with the Affordable Homes Act. Where is that? So, so Governor Healy filed in the fall this uh, $4.1 billion uh, housing package uh, with a whole series of, of, of dollars and, and policy initiatives around addressing housing. Mm -hmm. um, Cape Codders have known that we've had a housing crisis here for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, the pandemic really put that, that crisis on steroids. Uh, and it's really to the point that, that year-round people, you know, especially like you and me in our generation, you know, can't, can't afford, um, you know, are really struggling to afford housing. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's even worse in the extremities of the region, right? So I represent 19 towns across the Cape and Islands, um, you know, on Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Uh, you know, median home prices is, is, is well into the millions of dollars. In my hometown of Truro, you have to own, you have to, a household has to make $400,000 a year to afford yeah. the median home price. So I, as I'm someone, as someone who rents, right, you know, I need, I effectively gonna need a, um, a boyfriend or a husband who makes uh, quite a bit of money, right, right, to even be able to hope to afford anything in my hometown. Right. And so the governor, you know, to her credit, right, has recognized not only the housing crisis that we have here on Cape Cod and on the islands, but across much of Massachusetts. And so there's a lot of really good things in this bill the governor proposes. Um, the bill received a hearing in January. I sit on the housing committee and participated in that. Uh, and then the Joint Committee on Housing actually just advanced the governor's bill. Uh, it's now going to go before the Joint Committee on Bonding for a hearing. Uh, and then it'll, it, it's a money bill, so it'll start on the House. It'll go to the House. They'll probably take it up. Um, sometime in the spring, and then the Senate will follow suit. But um, two very big thing, important things that, that are in this bill that are relevant to Cape Codders and to Islanders. One is the establishment of a transfer fee on real estate transactions at a certain threshold. Yeah. Um, this is really the mechanism, the revenue stream that we're going to use to bring uh, dollars, especially to help subsidize uh, a whole host of innovative initiatives we're trying to do. Um, from year-round deed restrictions to lease to local programs uh, to help all the, all the ways that we're going to need to be able to, to subsidize housing for people. Um, so that's a really big deal. This started as a home rule petition uh, on Nantucket, um, Provincetown, Truro, Wellfleet, Chatham uh, have all followed suit with home rule petitions as well as uh, all six towns in Martha's Vineyard. Um, Brewster, Harwich, uh, East Ham, Orleans, they're all looking at advancing them. Really hope the town of Barnstable that, that you folks also pass a home rule petition here mm -hmm. um, to show growing support for the transfer fee. But this is sort of a revenue mechanism, right? Um, in, in a real estate market where the vast majority of the transactions um, are not for year-round people, right? right? But they're second, third, fourth, sometimes fifth homes. Right. Um, you know, uh, we know this transfer fee is a really important uh, policy tool. The second piece that the governor proposes is she endorses this idea of a seasonal communities designation, meaning that communities like ours here in Barnstable uh, and across the Cape and Islands, we have a, a unique set of housing challenges, and so we needed a unique set of tools to be able to deploy for that. And so the governor's bill sort of proposes this idea. Um, it sort of sketches out the scaffolding for it. Uh, so my team, working with Rep Diggs and Rep Flanagan and Representative Peake and others, uh, have been working to really put, put meat on the bones, if you will, mm -hmm. of that policy proposal. Uh, we're calling to have uh, an office that's dedicated to focus on the needs of seasonal communities like ours within um, housing and livable, livable communities. This, this new executive office has been created. Uh, we're looking to bring a, a whole host of unique tools um, for our town so we can really address the crisis that we have. Um, but, but if you are someone who, who, you know, you're not in the housing market or you're not a renter, right? Maybe you bought your home a decade ago or two or three decades ago. Mm -hmm. You refinanced it when interest rates are low. You know, may not appreciate what a steep hill we've got to climb. Oh, yeah. and, and, and I can see this, right? Because I represent, you know, all corners of this, 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 this region. And in the extremities, right? On Nantucket, on Martha's Vineyard, on the Outer Cape, you know, which is sort of the canary here. We're talking about subsidizing housing for people, not just who make below area median income, but for people who make 150, 180, 200 percent of area median income. Yeah. And so, you know, that's takes a lot of resources to it do. Does, yeah. But you know, you talk to any employer here, anyone who's in the business 
of whether you're running a healthcare organization or a town or, you know, I talk to our disability service providers, mm -hmm. um, everyone, our, our, our fire departments, right? What's the biggest challenge? Being able to hire people. Why can't we hire people? Because no one can afford to live here. Yep. So, you know, I, I think Cape Codders increasingly are going to have to think um, pretty broadly about what we're going to need to do to sustain a year-round community. And, and without a, a year-round community, without a robust workforce, you know, then how do we support, um, you know, a population, right? This is the oldest county in New England. It's here yeah. in Barnesville County, right? So we need young people or younger people right. who are working <laughs> um, to provide services, right, to, to help this place, um, you know, stay vibrant and, and, and stay year-round. So that's really what we're focused on. Um, the Affordable Homes Act is a tremendous opportunity, and the governor really has listened to the needs of Cape Codders and Islanders. You know, we very much have a, a seat at the table here in this negotiation. We've got four and a half months left in the legislative session. Uh, this is going to be the biggest thing we do. And, you know, we're just working furiously uh, to bring as many tools as we can. You know, there's no one silver bullet that's going to fix the housing crisis right. here. It's got to be um, many. You know, many we need tools. to look at both building new housing, preserving year-round housing, uh, encouraging and making sure that those who are renting year-round continue to do so. Right. So it's a whole set of tools that we're trying to bring to bear here. And with that, let's go, let's move right into the good landlord tax A, a tool we already have. Yes, yeah. yes. So I know the town of Barnesville has not adopted it as of yet, but I know that we're looking at it. So explain what the good landlord sure. tax exemption is. So they, it's is. only been maybe a, a week or so right. which the town could adopt very it. Fresh, so you're not, very fresh, very fresh. We're not uh, behind. You're not behind at all. So. Um, this fall, the legislature passed and the governor signed into law a historic billion dollar, um, billion dollar tax relief package. It's the largest tax relief package we've done uh, in anyone's, anyone's living memory. Um, when folks go to file their taxes, you know, you're going to see working families are going to see up to about $1,000 back in their taxes in Massachusetts, you know, earned income tax credit, um, you know, child and family dependent tax credit, all these really good things that are helping um, working families. Uh, we doubled the senior citizen circuit breaker. Right. Lots of really good stuff. We even raised the estate tax threshold, right, um, from one million to two million. Mm -hmm. A little section that was included in the law. Oh, we have a septic. There's a septic piece oh, in right. there. Yep. So if you're updating your your, your Title Five septic system, uh, that now is is tripled. The tax credit's tripled, right? Mm -hmm. Helping people afford. Yes. Wastewater. And I know you're working to hopefully get sewer connections. I, I should say as a little aside, so in the yes. governor's <laughs> bill, the FY25 right. budget that she filed, um, she endorsed uh, a technical fix that we have been pushing for to include, if you're in what's called a nitrogen sensitive area, which is all of Cape Cod, yep. uh, you then can apply uh, the Title V septic tax credit to a sewer connection. Right. So that's up to $18,000. And that's huge that you can here in off Barnesville. Oh, Everyone, that's huge. This is a huge well, big deal. Yeah, so we're going to work to get this done, right? Because yes. we know, um, you know, yes, there's the cost of you know, the, long, lo the longer term sort of betterment, mm -hmm. but that sewer hookup, it's really costly. It you is. know, can be ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars mm -hmm. unexpected. Uh, so this tax credit's really going to help. But back to another yes. piece that's <laughs> in the tax package. Um, it's this good landlord property tax provision, and I championed this along with my uh, colleague, uh, Senator Lydia Edwards from East Boston. And what this does is allows municipalities to give a property tax uh, exemption to landlords who are renting to year-round tenants uh, at affordable rates mm -hmm. for people who make up to 200% area median income. Yep. Uh, so this is a, yet another tool to try to retain year-round housing. Right. The market here incentivizes, you know, in incentivizes landlords you know, to rent on a short-term basis. Right. I think it's about 36 or 38 nights renting nightly in the summer yep. can make what you make in a whole year. And so we know that, like, we probably can't fully close that gap Not at all. with a property tax exemption, but we can, you know, incentivize. sort of incentivize yeah. it, right, and as a little bit of a thank you. So that's now available to towns. Hopefully the town of Barnstable is going to take a good hard look at that yep. and, and, and take it up. Yeah, and they are. I checked with our planning development right. director, Elizabeth Jenkins, that the town is looking at that. So hopefully we'll see that coming forward. The council will need to vote on it. Um, I also wanted to talk about you have a bill in the Senate, the Mass PFAS Act. PFAS Act. So it's. I yeah, so was reading it before we came down. I was like, oh, this is exactly what we need, especially here in Barnstable. This is something we've been working on for, for quite a bit of time. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and viewers in Barnstable will know PFAS. You've unfortunately been living with PFAS. Yep. Um, PFAS was detected uh, in the Hyannis water supply uh, a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and PFAS has been detected in other water supplies. Uh, actually, a study actually happened here in Hyannis to really look at 
the health effects yep. of people who've been exposed to PFAS, and residents have gotten, I think, are beginning to get those results back. It, it certainly, um, you know, can be, can be concerning stuff. Uh, so I've worked on these issues for a long time. Uh, I led an interagency task force uh, several years ago to map out a plan, a roadmap around how do we address PFAS in Massachusetts. That task force, interagency task force report, became the Mass PFAS Act uh, that I filed uh, in this session, along with uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Speaker Pro Tem Kate Hogan, mm -hmm. she's a representative. She's the third highest ranking for, uh, person in the, in the House of Representatives. Uh, and so the Mass PFAS Act was actually assigned, the bill was assigned to the Joint Committee on Public Health. Uh, conveniently, I share the Joint <laughs> Committee on Public Health. Yep. Uh, and so um, we just last mom month moved that bill out of committee. And the bill does two sort of broad things. Um, one, it works to remediate uh, the existing PFAS that we have, particularly in our, in our environment mm -hmm. related to public water supplies, but also private wells, uh, other sources of contamination, uh, and a whole host of resources uh, and directives to the Department of Environmental Protection. It then also we try to we work to turn off the spigot of PFAS right. coming into Massachusetts. And so there's a ban on PFAS in certain consumer products mm -hmm. where there's the highest risk of, of exposure, right? We're talking about children's products, textiles, food packaging, yeah. um, the kind of consumer products where you're literally ingesting the products or, or wearing the products or sleeping on the products. Um, and, and and that bill you know, has advanced favorably. It does a number of other pieces. There's a whole firefighting component to it as well. Mm -hmm. Firefighting foam um, ha has used PFAS in it. Uh, there's, there's, there's PFAS in, in the turnout gear that our firefighters use. Yeah. So this is an omnibus piece of legislation. Uh, I, I think it's well positioned to, to move this session and really having, you know, Kate Hogan, you know, pretty senior person in the house, yeah. um, teaming up with me on this. We really are sort of trying to get this done. Um, you know, this, we've got a lot of work to do to sort of unwind this forever chemical um, that has been affecting our environment and it certainly has been affecting human health mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, it's a real key priority and I know how important this is, um, not only just to people in Hyannis, but people across Barnstable and across the region, um, you know, who really are concerned and rightfully concerned about, about these forever chemicals that, you know, we probably had no business using in the, in the no. first place. Um, but, but trying to really un, un, undo that damage and then make sure going forward that Massachusetts joins just one of, of a handful of states that are you know, really on the vanguard on this issue. Right. It's so important and so many people in this town were affected by it. So um, I appreciate you taking that on. Um, is there anything else that we didn't touch upon? I mean, gosh, there's so much <laughs> we've been doing. We passed gun safety legislation. Uh, we're working on our FY25 budget. Uh, you know, revenues right now I think are, are, are a little more constricted than they've been. Uh, in prior years, sort of uh, immediately, in the immediate after, aftermath of COVID-19, we saw two things happen with revenues. One, we had a ton of federal supports, right, which really, I think, broadly have positioned the United States to have the strongest recovery mm -hmm. of any nation, right? Our economy is doing better than, than Europe, better than economies in Asia. Um, you know, I think a lot of that's been part of that real investment. Mm -hmm. So, but those were dollars that were brought to the state. There were dollars that were brought to towns like Barnstable. The other thing that happened right after COVID-19, right, is we all went out and had, um, you know, a bit of a party, right? And, and that spending, whether on meals tax or mm -hmm. spending on Wall Street, that meant that revenue was coming into the state, you know, year over year, 6%, 7% growth. Revenues now are, are back to that right. much more kind of restrained, what's expected sort of 2% growth. Mm -hmm. And that means there's a bit of a constriction that's happening in our budget. Um, we're not in recession. Right. It's been described to me a bit as sort of a bit of a, a revenue hangover. Right. But the FY25 budget is going to be much more limited than um, the prior budgets we've had. Uh, we're well positioned here on the Cape. Uh, we've been working hard to find other revenue streams through short-term room occupancy, which we've used to fund, you know, room occupancy dollars, especially to fund wastewater. Right. But just, you know, as folks look at our budget process, it's going to commence pretty soon. The House will take up their budget in April. We in the Senate take up our budget in May. We have a final, final budget for July. Um, that's something to watch for as well. And yeah. then housing, housing, housing. Uh, and then, you know, a myriad of other issues that we work on each and every day. Yeah, you guys are very busy, the entire delegation. Julian, thank you so much for joining Always us. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Thanks. We'll do it again soon. Of course.